this patient does not appreciate his suffering in the beginning this is written in the materia medica i will tell you how he keeps on now the number one the number one till the patient has not come to you how how i can how i will assess the patient that what he was doing before coming to me how he was living before coming to me so it is very important for you to know that before coming to you as a patient what he was doing for his problem for every patient it is very necessary for us to know now opium patient he keeps on telling the family member that there is nothing wrong with him now what happened that it is very very common that if a family if a, if a family member has a problem then the all people in the all member of the family they start advising him telling him that he needs medicine he must go to a doctor that he is sick so opium patient uh doesn't want this this thing that he should visit a doctor immediately so and if they repeatedly ask him to visit a doctor then he replies what for it's a small matter and i can handle it so what is the first thing we have to learn about the opium is that it is a small matter and i can handle it now this is the initial version of the patient before visiting the doctor now for example if an opium patient is brought to you by a family member okay a patient is brought to you by a family member now i ask the patient uh, for example a wife if a husband say i brought my wife for the treatment or a mother say i brought my son for the treatment for example like a family in family i ask the patient if you have come to me by your own will or if you have come to me because your mother asked you to come to me now if a patient says that my mother my mother asked me to visit you okay so the patient says my mother asked me to visit you okay now this is the version of the patient but who is suffering the patient why the mother has to ask him to visit or why the mother has brought the patient to front to me if he has no idea that he has to visit the doctor if he doesn't need the medicine why the mother has to ask the patient why the family member has to force or push the patient to visit a doctor why a patient himself doesn't feel the need to visit the doctor so the question here is that when a patient tells you my mother sent me to you my brother sent me to you my wife sent me to you so why why if the patient doesn't feel if the patient himself does, doesn't feel the need to visit the doctor if the patient doesn't feel so i ask the patient why they have to send you why you come because your mother asked you to come if you don't feel that you would have to go to the doctor if you don't have to need if you don't need medicine if you don't feel that you need a treatment why somebody is so here an opium patient will say that he was telling his family member that this is it is a small matter and i can handle it but they don't listen to me they ask me no you have to go to the doctor so i just come because they want me to come to you so number one story why he, he himself is not concerned about why the patient himself is not concerned about visiting the doctor now this state can happen in many patient okay now there are two states in a patient before before he goes to a doctor if the patient himself felt the need to go to a doctor or if somebody suggest him to go to the doctor 
if the family member has pushed him to or go to the doctor or if the family member just suggest him to go to the doctor so that is the first point and after coming to a doctor he has a different mental state so before a patient has to visit a doctor he has a different mental state now we have a first rubric for this kind of mental state first rubric is indifference indifference complaint does not now what is this rubric so the patient as i told you in the first slide here i go back to the first slide the patient does not appreciate his suffering in the beginning this is written in the materia medica so an opium patient does not appreciate his suffering in the beginning according to him it is nothing to do i mean it's, it's still very less it is very less it's very minute and there there is no need to go to a doctor or do anything okay please keep in mind this story so we have a rubric indifference complain so there is no complaint he doesn't ask the doctor he does what is complain he will not ask the family member to give him medicine he will not uh, do something by himself he is just living with the problem as it is it is very less it is very minute so why he is indifference so we have op we have three medicine hyoscyamus opium and stramonium they have they are only three drugs in this rubric so opium doesn't feel to complain means that not to go to the doctor not to complain no but all the three medicine they have similar similar kind of thinking but but individually they are different i will tell you later on somewhere how they are individually different though having the same rubrics so three medicine under under one rubric with different mentality this you have to understand okay now number 2 rubric danger there is a second rubric number 2 danger having not the sense of now there are there are patients just with the little problem one person five person they get anxious they are, they start to fear they start to you know feel that oh what is this it could be dangerous i could die i have to go to the doctor now this is a different kind of a mentality of certain patient now opium patient there are again three medicine now what is the difference here in this rubric there are three medicine hyoscyamus opium and stramonium now when we go to another rubric danger having not the sense of we have only opium but we have no hyoscyamus and no stramonium so here how the opium is different than hyoscyamus and stramonium because they don't share this rubric this you have to keep in mind second rubric now how to apply this rubric danger having not the sense so one is danger and second part is having not the sense of now a danger situation is you know that for example you are going somewhere and it and then you feel that oh is going to be dark before you come back home so what you try that before is it, it goes to going is going to be dark outside you want to come home because there is something danger you feel for example danger while driving at night for example there is some danger that something will something will rob you so there is a, always you know a thinking of danger behind doing something for example uh, you are you are if if i if somebody asks you to jump some people can jump easily some will not jump because they feel danger in it the beginning opium patient doesn't feel that there is a danger to his problem and that he has to report a doctor so there is no danger he can live with it it's a minor problem so what so this is attitude of a of an opium patient another rubric which comes in the, for the same state 
where the patient doesn't appreciate his problem we have 14 medicine and the rubric is well says he is when very sick so what we have to understand first there are two words very sick now according to the patient he is not according to the patient he is not very sick but according to the family member he is very sick so now there are two parts family member they have opinion they have an opinion that he is very sick and he must go to the doctor and the patient feels no he is not very sick he is sick he is only sick but he is not very sick that he needs a doctor so what is the problem between the family member and opium patient or all those medicines which are under the rubric well says he is when very sick so the patient is in a state of well now what is well what is well now well is a state of satisfaction well is a state of satisfaction that oh nothing is wrong with me i'm okay i can handle my problem it's not so big why should i go to the doctor you must have heard these kind of words from a patient for example when a patient is coming to you the first time and you ask him for how long you have been suffering from this problem and the patient will tell you that he has been suffering from this problem for around for example say one month one year five years and the question is that if it is the first time that he has been visiting to a doctor and if the patient says yes though i have this problem for many years i have never been to any doctor this is the first time that i am coming to you to take the medicine and now why why he never felt the need for the medicine why he did not go to a doctor in so many months or years then the patient say the doctor i never felt the need so this is this is the one of the problem many patient will tell you so it is not clear yet whether he is opium or not because there is a there are medicine like for example in well says he is uh, says he is when very sick you see we have opium we have hyoscyamus and but we don't have stramonium now when you are learning a remedy you must keep that what are the remedies sharing the same rubric now if i go back here indifference complaint does not we have opium we have stramonium we have hyoscyamus now where is the change the change is here that when this rubric is coming well says opium is there hyoscyamus is there but not the stramonium now that is you have to learn from you have to learn from me when it is coming to the rubrics how i learn okay so this is the first thing which is clear with the opium patient that they are not feeling danger about problem they can live i'm repeating they can live no issue the problem is still under their limit so nothing to worry now so after becoming sick firstly firstly an opium patient like to wait and watch please keep in mind this two words when you ask a patient why you did not visit a doctor why you did not take a medicine so the when a patient will tell you that doctor i thought let me wait and watch now you can feel the chances that this patient is okay maybe you have heard these two words from a patient wait and watch and from my research i found that if a patient use these two words 
wait and watch, I prescribe opium and it helped the opium patient. Okay, as in his opinion, it is not a big issue. Now, another word which you have to keep in mind, big, the word big. Okay, I will tell you later on how. That is the door. It, but it's not necessary you will get this door. It may be or may not be. So, till that stage, when the patient feels that there is no need to go to the doctor and he can tolerate the problem. Okay. So, first, the first point is, till the first point, so the rubric for the first point, when he has a wait and watch, we have the rubric contentment quiet. So, the rubric is contentment means there is no need to the doctor and not to complain. Quiet means not to complain. Not to say anybody. Not to show the problem. And contentment means that with the, he's, he's satisfied. Whatever state he has, he remains satisfied. So that is the first state of opium. To remain satisfied not to complain, contentment and quiet, only one medicine, opium, no hyacinthus and no stramonium. Now, this patient wants nothing, no medicine and no help of any kind, as I told you already. So, there is a rubric, ask for nothing. Very good rubric. I apply this rubric many times for arsenic, for copulus, bryonia, hyacinthus, opium, pulsatilla, now, you know that there is a pulsatilla here. Pulsatilla is the main, main rubric. Main rubric of pulsatilla. If you don't know, you can add in your vocabulary. Main rubric for pulsatilla is ask for nothing. Now, sometimes people, they don't like to ask for help because of ego. They have a strong ego and they always feel that they don't need anybody for help. They can manage on their own. They don't, they don't need, you know, anybody. Oh, I can manage. Why should I ask my mother? I never go to my brother. I never do this. I never go to the doctor. If something happens to me, first I want to help myself with my own idea, with my own thing. And later when, when things are not under my control, then only I go to the doctor. So, we can use the rubric, ask for nothing. Now, secondly, till the problem remains under his tolerance power, tolerance limit. Now, another thing, he doesn't think of visiting a doctor or telling about it to family. Now, another word which is coming towards tolerance limit. Now, I, practically, I tell you that there are there are patients of opium. When you ask them that, what was what is the need for you to come to me now? And if the patient says to you that, doctor, now I cannot tolerate my problem. Till I was able to tolerate my problem, I I thought, oh, let me wait and watch. Now, from yesterday, I have started to feel that the problem is beyond my limit now. If I don't go to the doctor, it will cross the limit. So, that is the first stage. He has a tolerance limit. And the second stage, when he comes to you, because it is crossing the limit. So, there are two, two states in opium patient. Till he can tolerate, no need to go to the doctor. When the problem starts to cross the limit, he must go to the doctor. That is a simple formula you can prescribe opium. As the problems start to increase, he start to get worried. Now, stage number two, the problem start, first thing is that, here was the first stage. Now the stage is coming to the second level. Stage number two, as the problems start to increase, then he start to get worried, thinking that he should take some action, else, the problem will out of limit. Okay. Now, at the number two state, when the patients feel that, oh, the problem is two, 
and then problem is three, and then the problem is four. And now here, the concern starts. He gets concerned about his problem at the stage number four or at the stage number three, depending upon individually, individually tolerance issue. It could be at the stage of two. So as the problems start to increase, he start worried. Oh, first worry start. Okay, what what shall I do? He should take some action. Otherwise, by tomorrow, my problem will increase. So, for example, when a patient of opium visit you, and you have you will ask that okay, for some days you were without medication. You were thinking that it will get better on its own and you have to wait and watch what has brought you to me then probably if patient is opium he will tell you that doctor i thought that today if i want go to a doctor then from tomorrow it will be it will be more than today and then it can further increase day by day and then it will cross the limit of my tolerance. This is the, this, these are the words which you have to listen very carefully. You have to be very careful while listening the words. Now, what opium patient has? Opium patient has frightful fancies. It means that he only comes to the doctor when he starts fencing. You know, fencing means that he starts to thinking that, oh, today if I don't go to the doctor, today my problem is, today my problem is, for example, 20%. And, and it was, it was 5% 10 days ago. And in the last 10 days, the problem progressed to 20%. Now, if I don't take the medicine, in the next 10 days, the problem will be 40%. Now, this is called fancy. Now he is fencing. If he doesn't, if he will not take the medicine at this state, the problem will be 40%. And then, if he doesn't take the medicine at this level, at this level, sorry, and if he still ignore the problem, here at 20%, the possibility is there from 40%, in the next 10 days, it will be 60%. Then it will be too much. It will be too much for him to tolerate. Too much. Now, this is the one kind of a door of opium. That he start to feel, you know, thinking that, oh, he gets frightful. And the next part. Now, here comes a kingpin rubric. Kingpin rubric is fear of extra veil. So, first three rubrics, well, danger, no sense, indifference complaint, the patient is at home, nothing to do, ask for nothing, stay with the problem, let the problem grow, I will see what happens in the future. Now, this is the first, that was the first day I told you about opium, which you never come to know because you are not with, you are not living with opium, or nobody is telling you like this. But it can happen that when you probe, when you probe opium patient or a patient, why he hasn't come to you earlier, then maybe you come to know about the first four rubrics. But okay, now presently the opium patient is in, sitting in front of you. So when you ask the patient that, what has brought you to me today? So the patient says that to, the idea of coming to you was doctor, for the last few days, as I, I told you, I was suffering from the problem. Yesterday, when I got up, or yesterday when I was working in the office, or yesterday evening while walking, for example, I felt that the problem is more than the previous days. And I felt there is something I am not able to do the way I was able to walk, I was able to do my things, I was more functionary. Then, you know, from day, day before yesterday. And yesterday when I felt that the problem is now that causing me more trouble, causing me more trouble. So, what we have to listen from opium patient, 
the problem is causing me more me more trouble okay this you have to listen from him the patient of opium is coming to you because the problem is causing him more trouble now and and he fears and he fears if he if he won't take anything if he won't take anything then the problem will be threefold or increase further that is the concern of the opium patient to visit this thing brings opium to you so the rubric is fear of extravagance extravagance means the more than more than the limit now what is this rubric extravagance now what is the meaning of extravagance excess in any matter or over a certain limit now to tell you more about this rubric please listen to me for example the fear of extravagance is coming especially for the shopping for example i want i want to buy this this uh, pencil and this or for example i want to buy this buy a mobile okay. now when i when i want to my buy a mo new mobile phone i keep a limit in my mind a budget that that how much i can spend on a new mobile phone this is usual okay everybody keeps a budget okay uh, i will like i will buy a mobile phone uh, for uh, $500 up to that up to that level maybe up to 200 200 to 500 500 dollar is my limit after that i will not spend okay but it's not that everybody is keeping this limit there are people they say oh i can buy up to 1000 no matter how, no matter i want no good mobile phone the cost is not a problem i can pay anything but it has to be good quality good thing good functioning good features so there are people but when an opium patient if it is an opium patient not uh, what he will do that he he make a limit okay i want to buy i am going to buy a shirt and uh, i will buy up to the limit 50 dollar enough that is enough now he goes to a shop and he say oh i want this i want this shirt how much is this and the shopkeeper says uh, 70 dollar oh it's too much because my idea was only 50 dollar but the shopkeeper is saying 70 dollar now it is 20 dollar extra then i predicted i predicted that when i bought this shirt 2 years ago it was 20 dollar okay after two years maybe 30 dollar that is the most okay so this is how i go to the shop but when i go to the shop i ask that oh i want the same shirt which i bought two years ago for 20 dollars and the shopkeeper says but now it is 40 dollar oh so much 40 dollar but I only have the limit up to $30. Now I don't want to buy. It's too much. Now this is opium. So in case if you know somebody in your family, maybe you yourself, if you have always a limit in your mind for something, limit. And if somebody, okay. Now what happened that as a homeopath in India, I, I don't know about Iran. Maybe it's also true in Iraq. There are some opium patient in India when they have to visit a homeopath. You know, they choose: shall I go to allopathy or shall I go to homeopath or shall I go to a shall I take medicine by myself? Okay, because there is a concern of money behind. Some patient in India, they who are opium patient, they say, oh, if I go to allopathic medicine, I have to pay more. I have I, I think that in homeopathy there is less money. 
let me try let me go to homeopathy now for example there are many there are few opium patient who call me i i understand from the call that he is a opium patient only by by call not by case take now opium patient call me hello dr zayan i want to show you okay you have to take the point okay i take the point what is your fees ah my fees is 100 dollar what now the patient you know he get shocked 100 dollar now this is this is very clear his opium okay because opium patient whenever you tell him the price he collapse 100 dollar for homeopathy are you crazy doctor who pay 100 dollar to a homeopath you know the best allopath in my area he is only taking 50 dollar and you are homeopathic doctor and homeopathic medicine are so cheap in 2 dollar you get medicine for what you are taking 100 dollar oh is too much now is very clear he is opium but now i will not reduce my price okay it's up to you if you want to pay 100 dollar come if not go now he stuck hmm how long how long, how how many time you charge 100 dollar oh after every three months after every three months you again charge 100 dollar you see the voice okay as if he will come out of the telephone and catch you okay so and you say ah oh, yes after every 3 month i charge 100 dollar oh doctor. very costly okay but so i will get better before the 3 months maybe maybe not so how long do you think i have to take the medicine how long i don't know maybe 6 months 6 months so much time oh i thought that i am going to a homeopathic doctor i will get better in one month you are taking so much time 6 months and then you are taking 100 dollar and then again 100 dollar so in 200 dollar you will treat me for 6 months oh and then you think i will get better completely after 6 months i'm not sure oh you're not sure so it means that if i don't get better after 6 months i again have to pay 100 dollar yes maybe oh doctor you are very costly now this is the main first tendency of opium so even if you tell the opium patient now opium patient say oh so you ask the patient what was in your mind to pay me what was in your mind my fees before calling me i thought if allopathic doctor takes uh, 50 dollar maybe 20 dollar that is your cost of homeopathy and now you are telling 100 dollar it's too much doctor you have to reduce is too much now i can't reduce you have to pay 100 dollar so somehow this is the first reaction of opium if there is something he has to buy he has to deal with the problem if it is under the limit is okay if the problem is 10% no problem if the problem is 15% no problem but when he see that the problem is increasing now day by day oh doctor you know last one week the problem was up to here after 3 days problem was here up to here and yesterday i saw the problem already here now i am worried that i have to stop it here i have to stop otherwise it will come to here then the whole finger will go away then he will come to the doctor this is called fear of extravagance 
so so for example a patient says that doctor one year ago i had the pain in my hair only one finger hair and then i said oh maybe i do maybe it's because of something i don't know let me see let me see one year ago and then after six months the pain was in the whole finger and then i say oh let me wait for another few minutes few few months few times and then the finger then the pain appeared here up last three months three months ago in this finger two finger in one and then yesterday i start feeling pain in this finger also and now i got say there is something dangerous so there was no danger here but now because it started to appear here he start to see danger now i must go to the doctor otherwise now if he if he will not take the medicine the chances are the whole finger and the next finger will also involve and then he won't be able to tolerate so much pain in all the fingers then he comes to the doctor this is again fear of extravagance of opium so probably you have heard the patient of opium in your life maybe you have not given opium to them that they start like this that they notice their they have noticed their problem months ago days ago but they never thought that it is it's going to be so much please write this line the patient says i i notice this problem so it is in the, it is in the notice of the mind the mind has noticed the problem that i came to know that i have this problem for many months but i did not worry okay because it was minute but now as it is started to grow i started to worry that if i don't take the action now probably the whole hand will go away the whole then the problem will be so much i i won't be able to bear it so this is very clear cut opium statement okay number one door so this is the number two door number one door i showed you number second door fear of extravagance so at this stage his mind goes blank and he could not take a decision what to do whom to contact now the further next door next door is coming door number 3 now the patient started to feel danger okay danger comes in his mind oh now the problem is danger now he has to visit a doctor or do something visit or do something point number 2 what the problem is that with opium what is the problem with opium the problem that now he has to decide where to go now what to the decision is now he knows something has to to be done something has to be done what what to do number 1 what to do now here he goes blank he has no idea so second point when the patient is not coming to you opium for example the opium patient may tell you okay now we are talking opium to the number 2 stage uh, for example a month ago he came to know in his mind that the problem could be dangerous and he has to visit a doctor okay now it has happened a month ago but he is coming to you after a month so the question is that what he did between this period of one month what he did and the patient says doctor i did nothing and why you why you haven't done anything in this period when you know that the problem is growing you may be in danger you need medication why you did not visit me a month ago why you are coming after a month you know doctor there is another problem i was in a dark i was blocked now what to do for this shall i go to a doctor shall i do this what shall i do i have no idea what to now i ha i had no idea what to do for that 
this was clear that i have to do something okay but what to do i was not clear so i was i was like this what to do what to do what to do what to do then this is this is stage number 3 which is very important that why opm patient are not able to visit you quickly or early there are few patient they may tell you parisa that somebody told me about you that you can go to parisa okay i got your reference two months ago from a friend that parisa is a good homeopath you can go to him but the patient is coming to you after two months of the reference okay he got your reference two months ago but why he did not come to you earlier why he is coming after two months if he was waiting if he was you know uh, busy what was that that he he did not come to you two months ago you know doctor i got your idea two months ago but i was not sure if you will be able to cure me or not i was thinking that what i am going to tell her number 1 when the parisa will ask me about my symptom from where i start my case what should i tell him and today doctor today when i when i'm sitting in front of you the first thing doctor i have many problems i have many problems and i don't know from where to start have you ever heard a patient who has come to you just by sitting when you ask the patient what is your problem and the patient says this is my problem that i have so many problem now i don't know from where to start from where to start my case now you ask the doctor from where i start now he has a problem how can i know what is his problem now the patient of opm will ask the doctor doctor you start the case we how can i start the case you are the patient i am not the patient you must tell me what is your problem the patient say this is my problem i wanted to come to you two months ago but i could not come to you because i i have no idea what to tell you from where to start the case and today my mother told me at least you go to the doctor when my mother told me go to the doctor sit in front of him maybe you get the idea so the opm has a problem that even if he comes to the doctor it is very difficult for him to start the case now he sit in front of you opm patient just sit in front of you now you say yes what i can do for you doctor i have many problems i don't know from where to start so start start from anywhere i don't know doctor you ask me what can i ask you ask anything i will answer but i don't know i have no so many problem sometime i think i have problem in my head i think i problem my nose sometime i think i problem in my mind sometime i think i find have a problem in the stomach i don't know doctor where is my problem have you ever come across this patient like this so this is opm so the patient of opm tells you i'm opm but you never see him okay he tells you doctor i am opm give me in his language but we don't see this so this is how we learn opm so the first part is clear third part is clear to you that the problem with the opm patient he wants to he wants the treatment he when he thinks that he needs treatment he goes blank and when he goes blank and then the problem starts
So it is in his mind that he has to do something for the problem, but doesn't know how to get rid of it. And with the time passing, the fear start to grow that if he won't take the medicine, the problem will grow further. As he is a directionless, then by chance he meets a person having same problem. Then he will ask him what he has been doing for the it, or maybe some one notice his problem and ask him to do something. He will ask the person to advise him as what shall he can do for it. as he is not able to take a decision or does not know what to do so this is a state so how how an opium patient gets a reference of the doctor how an opium patient will reach to the doctor he will reach to the doctor when somebody will notice his problem or by chance in when he is talking to somebody and somebody will suggest oh you can go to dr sagal he is very good in this and then he get the direction so the problem with the opium patient is that he feels directionless in the beginning so this is the state when he could not come to the doctor because he doesn't know what to do for his problem so when you ask a patient of opium that what he was doing for the last 3 months sitting at home not caring about his problem so the patient may say doctor i was directionless i had no idea what to do i had no clue where, where to go somebody suggested me so after getting an advice so after getting an advice that he can visit a doctor but then he could not decide what kind of a doctor or specialist he should visit he would ask the person for further advice after getting further direction that he could visit homeopath then he needs further direction as to which homeopath he should visit as there are so many homeopaths in delhi now he doesn't know the direction which homeopath he has to visit in nutshell an opium patient needs direction at every stage somehow he get the direction and reaches a homeopath so after it's not very easy for a uh, it is not very easy for a opium patient to visit you quickly because he needs uh he needs a direction and after he gets that direction then only he can visit you so this is a rubric we call grouping as if in the dark this is the rubric you know that is the research of dr segal in the beginning he started to apply this rubric from kent grouping as if in the dark now there are you know there are few remedies again here but the problem with the grouping as if in the dark is that he ha has no direction what to do now what is the problem how we understand this rubric grouping as if in the dark in the in the context of opium then opium needs direction at every step every step for example now he has a problem so the direction number 1 he has to go to a doctor now he stuck here he doesn't know which doctor doctor in tehran doctor in india doctor in there where now he he has no direction somebody will lead him okay go to doctor sag okay now he has another direction he got one direction go to doctor sag okay now he now he stay here doctor sag now what to tell the doctor sag how to start my case what shall i tell him first now he stuck again okay now somebody will help him at least you go to dr saigar and tell him about your problem tell him that you have a uh, indigestion problem so he get the direction okay now he has to visit me so he has to take the appointment okay now what to do for the appointment now he stuck somebody suggest him okay call by phone use the whatsapp then he use the whatsapp so every direction the opium patient stuck he doesn't know the next point so the patient say that doctor this one of the problem is that i wanted to visit you but then every stage i stuck i don't know what to do next now i am in front of you i don't know what to tell you so this is called grouping as if in the dark very good rubric and i applied this rubric for more than 30 years in many many patients so 
want of susceptibility to remedies even though indicated now this is there is another thing which has come into the proving you know the many times the people say that how how you conclude whatever you say about a rubric it is not written in the proving if the patient also said the same word as you are telling us in the proving now in the proving it is it is told that it is that uh, every indicated remedy a patient feels that it harm a disease that origin from fright so there are two things which we learn from about opium from the proving is that that his problems are coming most of the disease are coming from fright number 1 and he has a susceptibility or harm or influenced by medicine now this is you know is there in the mind of the patient this patient now another thing maybe you have listened you have listened it uh, you know that most of the patient opium patient they are afraid to come to homeopath because it is very true uh, they have listened from many people that the first homeopathic medicine brings the problem out or the old problems comes out and because of this fright or fear they don't like to visit to a doctor now there are two words coming one word is fear and one word is fright do you know these two words fear and fright in your country you know this or they are same word fear and fright bahare same no change fear and fright no in the, the translation they are the same okay uh raza says different in repertory we have two words we have three word actually fear fright and dread there are three words actually in english there are three words and it is also written in the diction, in the repertory now the fear is when we are talk about the word fear it is for the future like for example uh, i don't want to take injection i don't want to go for surgery because it can harm me in future there are people they come to homeopathy because they don't want to go for surgery they don't want to operate okay because they fear that after the surgery the complication will arise they will they will suffer more after the surgery so they they want that the homeopathy should take care of their problem so that they can avoid the surgery so this rubric we can apply fear of being injured fear of injury okay this is we apply the rubric fear of injury and there are patient who already have suffered in the past already suffered in the past from medicine from you know many th many thing they they have suffered in the past because of some person from medicine from uh, surgery or something bad happened to them and now they don't want to go they don't want to experience the same thing again in their life which they have suffered in the past so this is called fright Okay, so fright is something which you have suffered in the past. It is coming from that, and fear which you have to suffer in the future. Okay, now opium patient is the one who has a fright. Now, it is possible or it is not possible that opium patient has a for his present problem. It it is possible that he has been to homeopath. or allopath or to another doctor in the past already or it is possible that the problem is new first time and he is coming to the first time to a homeopath okay then he has no idea to what i am going to tell you now but for example uh the a, an opium patient has been to a homeopath in the past 5 years ago 10 years ago or when he was a child or you know he seen his mother father or somebody in the family who had visited to a homeopath now in his mind a, a, there uh, i mean there may be idea that for example the patient opium patient immediately just he sit in front of you he say doctor before you start my treatment i want to tell you one thing you know that i wanted to take homeopathic medicine for the last 6 month but i but i i 
I was afraid to start homeopathic medicine. And what, why you were afraid? You know, doctor, when I was child, I took homeopathic treatment for my skin problem. And then after taking the prop medicine, all my skin problem come out. And the doctor, you know, kept on telling my mother, uh, my parents, oh, it's okay. It is possible. It will go away. Don't worry. It is a, you know, aggravation. It is a very good sign. But doctor, I suffered a lot. And that doctor kept on telling the same thing. Oh, it will go away one day. And then I suffered for three months. Three months, I suffered very badly. All my face got spoiled. My skin was very bad. Something happened like that. Okay? And after that, I lost the courage to go homeopath. I, 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 told, I told myself, I will never go to a homeopath in my life because of that bad experience I faced. Or I saw my mother, I saw my family member, you know, suffered when they started homeopathic medicine. Their problem came out and the doctor was, oh, very good. It's a very good sign. But my mother suffered so badly. And then she had to take allopathic medicine to stop that action. And the, and the homeopathic doctor was kept on telling, very good, very good. It's a very good sign. But he was not able to stop it. I was so angry with that that I, I, I immediately took the decision. In my life, I will never go to a home. Okay? Now, that is already in his mind. But now, he has come to you. Now, he has come to you. Why? You are a homeopath. And you have already decided in the past, you never go to a homeopath. Then why you come to me? I'm also a homeopath. And now the patient says that, you know that one of my friends who took, I saw, I saw one friend or I, my one friend told me that he came to you for the treatment of skin or some throat problem or some problem. And with your medicine, no aggravation came. You gave the medicine and everything was clear. I saw, I saw a friend came to you with a problem. You gave the medicine, nothing happened. And then I thought that maybe you have some other kind of homeopathy you are doing. Maybe that doctor was ignorant about homeopathy. So my friend, you know, courage me, go to him. Okay. So the first stage was, first stage was when he had a bad experience, he got discouraged. He got discouraged with homeopathy. No courage. I will never go to homeopathy. I was so frightened. I will never go to homeopathy. No, no, no. So he was so discouraged because of the bad experience. Now somebody, he saw a result. When he saw the result, my patient who got better without aggravation. Oh, oh, it's not true. It's not true. Then, then comes the hope. He said, doctor, now I think that I can try. I can try. So there is a rubric, discouraged, alternating with hope. Discouraged, alternating with hope. So now the patient has come to you with hope. Now what is the hope? The hope is that I will not give him the medicine which will bring his problem out. In this hope he came to me. But what was the stage in the past? Discouraged. Now the discouraged state is no more now converted into hope after seeing the result. Alternating, the word is alternating. Okay. Now the patient is coming to you with the hope that this doctor, Dr. Seigel will not give me medicine which can bring the problem out. Now he's sitting in front of me. But he said, doctor, I must tell you, I had a very bad experience with homeopathy in the past. And from that day, I told myself, I will never go to. But today I'm coming to you because I heard that you are a good doctor, experienced doctor. You will not give me the medicine, which will bring all this problem out. Okay. Have you heard this from a patient ever? Yes. Good. So I also heard. I use the rubric, discourage alternating with hope. Okay. And there's another rubric. 
call superstitious. I will explain you why superstitious. So you see that what is the what is our cycle method? Cycle method is whatever we listen, whatever you listen, we listen the same thing in Iran, in Germany, in Israel. We listen the same story from the patient, like opium is telling you, but we never know how to use it. So what we made, we, we use the rubrics so that the life in all the globe for homeopath becomes simple. So what I'm telling you, what I'm teaching you is applicable in your patient also. They also tell the same story. My patient tells the same story. But there is a rubric. You can apply. I can also apply for the patient. And the patient will get better. So the first thing he requests, doctor, that now already his problem has increased. He doesn't want any addition. So the patient first requests you, doctor, I already have six problems. I don't want that you should give me any medicine which can bring eight, nine, ten problem because I cannot talk, I will not be able to tolerate more than this. This is fear of extravagance. Now, for this state, the first rubric is alert. So whenever an opium patient is telling you this word, he is trying to put you, doctor, alert, alert. See, please don't prescribe any medicine. I'm already suffering from five problems. I don't want to add more problem to my already existing problem. So he's a, opium is an alert patient. So he will never take anything which can. So before taking the medicine, he will confirm. Doctor, are you sure? This medicine will not increase my problem. Sure. Increase. So for opium patient, what is the most trouble part part which you have to keep in mind in mind increase word the word increase he never want anything to increase from his present state whatever the problem he has he say doctor i'm happy to suffer from two problems but i don't want that you should give me medicine then the two problem will increase to four so the word increase is very troublesome for opium patient. You have to keep in mind the word, whenever a patient uses the word increase, please don't give any medicine that it will increase my problem, opium. Like I gave you the word for gelsemium every day. So the word for opium is increase. Cautious. So opium patient is very cautious that before taking, before coming to a homeopath, First, he will notice that there has to be no aggravation. He will also tell the homeopath that he has heard or he has seen or he has himself has suffered in the past that after giving the medicine, homeopathic medicine, the problems comes out. I don't want this. I'm telling you very clearly. So, friends, so some, you know, exile. You have to go in exile. So, when I ask the patient why you are saying so, why you are so, why you are pleading me, doctor, I have heard that homeopathy medicine first bring the problem out and later it cures. For that reason, I did not visit to a homeopath even after knowing about you. With such an opinion, how could you decide to visit me? The person who has recommended your name told me that you don't prescribe such medicine which bring out the problem. Please, doctor, don't give me any medicine which cause aggravation to my already existing problem. Further, he may say, if you think that after medicine something will aggravate, then I won't take the medicine. Or give such a medicine which doesn't produce big aggravation. Upon asking why he has such a fear, in case the patient had a previous experience of homeopathic medicine, after which his problem got increased and the homeopath could not manage the patient, then he won't dare to try homeopathy again due to the fear of having the same bad experience again. So we have the two rubrics here, anxiety, fright remains if the fear of the, so there are three words, anxiety, fright and fear. So this patient say that I already have suffered. So fright is in the past, it is remained there and gives the fear and anxiety to try the things again. 
anxiety after flight. So the patient always has an anxiety. What would happen if he if he try homeopathy again? So he has, he never dares to try homeopathy again. So and you know that now the more version of these two rubrics, a patient may say, "Doctor, I easily get scared if I get any old symptom like mild pain, fever, cough, which had put me in a big trouble, as I don't want to have it again in life." Now, for example. Now, what is the condition of an opium patient? Uh, six months ago, he got better. There was a chest pain or some something happened in the chest, and he got fully recovered. Now, with the little sign of <coughs> pain, he immediately get come into the state of fright. Oh, if it is the same problem, if it could be the same problem, then he will call the doctor. Doctor, yesterday. I had little symptom from the same problem which I, you know, I came to you six months ago. That was the problem was too much for me. Yesterday I had little experience of that problem in my body. If it is the same problem, can you give me the medicine? I don't want that. It should go to that state again. So year, month, or days before I suffered from the abdominal pain, which I kept on ignoring for few days, and later the problem became so worse that it does. It took a lot of days to get better. After that day, with a little pain in the same area, I get afraid and watch it carefully. If it is the same like before or different, so alert rubric. He is always alert, so that is very good rubric for opium alert. As a homeopath, what to tell the patient if after the medicine old problem or there may be chances that some new things appear, as he is already scared about it. To tell him the law of homeopathy that after medicine. It is good to have aggravation. For an opium patient, everything runs around fear of extravagance. A patient who has been waiting in hope that perhaps his illness will get better on its own, without any logic behind it, how it will happen, he has no idea and won't be able to explain. So what happened that he opium one stage is indifference and then he becomes serious. At this stage, he won't wait. And when he once he becomes serious, then he won't wait and look for a doctor immediately. But he feels lost due to no direction as what to do. Now, first time visitor while taking appointment may ask for the. You no, know, what happened that first thing, opium patient while he is taking appointment. How much I shall have to pay for the treatment? Normally, a physician will tell their fees to the patient, as I told you already. Next, he may ask if I have paid so much, then how long will it take to get better? Next, further, he calculate the total amount he may have to pay for the total treatment, and then he may ask the doctor after paying so much if his problem will get cured completely. <clears throat> Now, there is another one thing which I'm vastly to, to tell you. There is a rubric called noise inclined to make. <clears throat> Very good rubric, noise inclined to make. So, <clears throat> first thing you want patient, but you never want to have an opium patient in your clinic. If you give opium, it's okay. Now, opium patient never gets satisfied with the result. Number one. For example, opium patient comes to you with five problem. Now, first he will ask you to take care of problem number one, which he is not able to tolerate. For example, he said, "Doctor, I have five problem, but the main problem for which I have come to you is my nose, because this is very troublesome." Okay, now you understand his opium, because he is using the word troublesome. Now you ask the patient, "What about the neck? What about the four other problem?" You don't want them to be treated. You don't want medicine for that. You only have come to me for the nose problem. What about other four problem? No, no, other four problem I can tolerate, but this nose problem I'm not able to tolerate. It is bothering me so much, very much. So please take care of it now. Can you give opium? <clears throat> it can happen 
there's a problem which is not in, which are not important for him they get better first and this problem nothing happened now he is very upset with you next time when he comes to you he say doctor i told you alert i told you on the first day please take care of this but you gave me medicine for another problem and this problem is same like this now i tell the patient <clears throat> i cannot go with the medicine inside you and tell the medicine on which to work first and which to work in the last the medicine work as it as it like to work or i cannot write on the medicine okay go and work on the first number 1 this number 2 this number 3 this number 4 and this number 5 i can't tell the medicine to do work like this. but doctor i told you you did not listen to me proper i listen to you i gave you the medicine to help this but nothing happened here nothing happened here what kind of medicine you gave me? this is called noise inclined to make he become noisy and now there are patients sitting outside in your chamber waiting your turn now you get afraid come 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 down otherwise the other patient will run away because they listen the story outside now the opium patient always you know <clears throat> for example you have not given opium to a patient and the patient has been taking medicine for two months no change okay now he enters in next time when he comes with, without sitting what what is this i have been coming to you for the last week you never listen to me i told you give the medicine for this you always are giving medicine for some another problem and now you say sit down we can talk nicely no what do you mean nicely i pay you 200 dollars for what okay calm down no what do you mean calm down you have to tell me are you going to give me medicine for this or not so this is called noise inclination to make he become noisy because you are not listening to him you are not doing what he likes to so there is a rubric delusion disorder objects appear the rubric is delusion disorder objects appear he say this is disorder i am asking you to give the medicine for the nose you are giving the medicine for the there is a rubric this delusion disorder objects appear so opium patient doesn't like the way you want to treat him he likes the way he wants to be treated he doesn't he say doctor i don't care what your law says i don't care how your principle works i don't care about your herring law you have to you if you want to give medicine you have to give me medicine as i want but if you are not if your medicine is not acting the way he want then we have a rubric delusion disorder objects appear then he gets very angry so when a opium patient is coming to you with the five problem and he wants to take care of only one problem as the rest of the four problem he can tolerate or he it is under the control there is no danger and you are giving medicine because you can't help it you are not we are not allopath to give medicine point by point we can give and when you are telling the patient but when i give you the medicine it will take care of your another four problem what is the harm in it what is the harm you want me to treat one problem but i am giving you one problem for free is very good option you are paying you are paying me for one problem i am giving you for free it's like a shampoo buy one shampoo get half bottle free so what is the harm he said no i don't want this only one problem take for free no only one problem uh, certainly the session was very good i enjoy every session very very much and uh, i try to attend your uh, advice for my patients okay so let me leave you katy happy 
Uh, yes, it was excellent. Uh, you show a new world to us. Thank you very much. And Mariam, are you still happy? The seventh session? Yes, sir. it was marvelous. I'm very, very happy. Good. Very good.